Welcome to this presentation from the Downey Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are located in the greater Los Angeles area at 9820 Lakewood Boulevard in Downey, California. We would love to have you worship with us any Saturday you are in our area. Today's message is staying on the right path. Now, here's Pastor Kerry. Third time's a charm. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> um, well, we are continuing on our sermon series called The Journey. Um, this is the third one. Next one, next week will be the last one. And um, I'm trying to create a, a mental picture on what a journey is in life. Um, you know, like recreationally, we speak of a path. And you're going up a mountain. And in, in this, just someone made reference of this a couple of weeks ago. The men's ministry did this ambitious project of going up Echo Mountain in Pasadena uh, or Altadena. And um, so we, we all go up this, this mountain. And like someone said, Gustavo wanted to end our, some of our lives and that <laughs> it was way more than we could handle many of us could handle um, but so in life it's a little bit like that we were on this mountain climb we were on this path and there's these ups and downs um, there's places of shade there's sometimes we're just in in the heat of the day and and the sun is beaming on us and then there's animals that come by rattlesnakes come by that's just what life is like for all of us, for most of us at least. And so um, the analogy here is we are all on this path, this journey. And let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for this great opportunity to be in your presence, um, to hear your words, and help us all in, our, in the busyness of our lives, the things that are um, that distract us and keep us from hearing your voice. Help us to put those things aside and spend this time with you right now. May your Holy Spirit lead us. We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So kind of to recap, um, the first one was be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God goes with you and he will not never leave you nor forsake you Amen. to remember that in this path of life this this journey of life you know there's times where we do feel alone there's times of isolation uh, maybe from your loved ones from your enemies from the people around you but we always have God. He is always with us. We are never alone. Um, and then also, last week we talked about this. James, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And the reference is that there are always going to be difficult times. There's going to be trials. There's going to be um, sufferings in your life. And uh, it depends on how we handle these things. Um, they can be used for strength for character development, for good. Or we can allow them to overwhelm and overtake us and to destroy us. And in um, James's case, he's talking about uh, praise God for your sufferings, for your trials. Praise God that these things happen, because this is where you grow and you become stronger. And as I shared last week, that almost every significant event in my life had came from some sort of suffering or trials, right? It's not that we need to pray, God, please bring me suffering. Please don't do that. 
<laughs> right? But recognize that they are going to come. And when they do come, they are opportunities of actual growth. Right? Um, so that was last week. And, um, but sometimes we create our own sufferings and trials. Right? We're on the path. Right? We're going on the path. And we go, and sometimes there's a fork in the road. And there's the one that says, God's path, big sign, God's path. And this is the sign that says, your path, the path you want, right? I remember one time I was in a, um, driving into um, Montana, going through uh, a winter storm, trying to get home from school. And I am driving, and God is probably telling me, you know, you need some sleep. Take a nap. And I'm saying, oh, I just want to get home, you know. And I remember going a wrong turn. Or, or I didn't even know that I was going on the wrong turn because I was falling asleep. I missed the sign, the sign that says, God, you're God's sign, I'm going to say. Home is this way. And, and, I, and I, I just went a different way. And I remember at, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I don't see any car in sight. And it's 20 below outside. And I remember driving, falling asleep, and falling into a ditch, right? You know, because I was um, stubborn to prove myself that I can do this. You know, but let me just read this verse here. Psalm 1611 says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in, in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. There is God's path, and then there is your path. God's path promises you blessings, happiness, joy. Your path um, <laughs> probably promises that too, but it's a lie. It's maybe your ego saying, I need to do this, or I should have this, or I should. I've realized this. Have you ever been in a situation where there's something that you wanted so badly in your life? You just knew, oh, this would make, this is, this is exactly what I want. I've never wanted anything more than this. And you know it wasn't really coming from God. And it may, for you to receive this, you might have to compromise a little bit to get this, right? And you think, OK, this is your path, your direction, and this is where you're walking. And you think, this is what's going to bring me happiness. And God's path is saying, no, this is what brings me happiness. But this path is shiny and beautiful. Or if you're a girl, very handsome. Or if, if it's a job, it means promotion, but sacrifice some of your ethics. Or this is going to be, this is going to be fun, but sacrifice your health. You know, this is your path. God's path is, this is not so exciting. It means coming to church, listening to Gustavo's Sabbath school class. No, that is super exciting. It's just like, right? That means, you know, not pro maybe giving up the one thing that you think will bring you the most happiness, what you so desperately desire. You know, your, your carnal nature says, I want this so bad. God's saying, no. My path. Wait, or this isn't right. This isn't for you. This isn't yours. And you, you have to decide your path, pretty, handsome, God's path may not 
bring the excitement in your life that you think you should, well, that you want. But how many of you walked your path before? And you're like, oh, this is all good. And then all of a sudden, you're starting to see, man, this path is starting to get really steep. It's really taking a lot out of me. At one point, this was happiness or excitement or fun. Now it's turning to being destructive, harmful, painful, and leading you on a road to a place where you don't want to go. God's path, right here, you make known to me the path of your life, and you will fill me with what? Joy, your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. God's path, what do you, you don't see it right away. You may, it may seem boring, but it will always lead you to the greatest amount of joy you could experience in this world. Tell that to our children who are in a point, in a stage of needing excitement and fun in life. And tell, you know, help them see um, the directions where those trails are going, taking them. Because a lot of us have been there and wished we stayed on God's path. One of the things is, you know, the Bible has so many experiences and stories of people who kind of lose sight of God's path and wants and needs to do their own way, um, have it their own way. Um, the, the most common one is the children of Israel. You know, God brings them out of the wilderness, right? Does all these miracles, splits the Red Sea, um, creates a pillar of, of smoke so they can see where, where to go. They give them manna so when they're hungry, there's so many miracles. And even after one miracle after another, you read it, it looks like the next day, God, what have you done? You should have cut me into slavery. We're going to die. You're, what are you doing to us? Complaining after miracles, after miracles, going back and complaining. Has God done something for you in your life? Has God done any amazing thing for you in your life? Can you see that? Right? And you know, God has, I hope all of you can acknowledge that. Man, God has been good to me right here and um, at this point in time, or right here at this point in time. And, um, and how often do we forget? All of a sudden, oh, God had gave me this great miracle. And now, oh, man, we're having a bad day. Bad things are happening. Maybe we're having a bad week. Maybe we're having a bad month. Maybe, and all of a sudden, you start to see, oh, man, what has God done for me lately? And we completely forget. And now, because of that, we start walking on our own path. We're going to do it my way because it's not working out with me and God now. How quickly we forget what God has done for us. How quickly we forget. It's important for us to find ways to remind us of the miracles, the the great things, the good things that God has done for us in our lives. Um, I, I remember this, I'm thinking this quite a bit in my last year in this issue. Thinking that, you know, wondering whether I should go down the road and question God or curse God. And thinking, God has done, given me so much in my life, so many things to bless, be blessed by, and to, to recognize how amazing he is to me. To have one thing that goes wrong and all of a sudden give that up 
really shows that I wouldn't have a lot of faith in God. Um, it really is a faith issue. It's a, it's a, it's a faith. It's, it's really putting your trust. When things are going wrong or, you know, when things, when you're on that test and that road and you're not at the fork and you're trying to decide your way or God's way, you, you may, all your emotions and your desires and everything may be trying to pull you to go your way. This is the time it takes faith to say, okay, God, I, I don't, this, this, this doesn't make sense. It's not logical. Um, it's, it's painful. It's not what I want to do. But I put my faith in you. And you know best. You know best. One of the things that will help you in this is this. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Here's the psalmist talking about how, oh, I just, he's at this point. Man, he probably went down his road so many times, and he's seen the pain and the um, the devastation that it's caused, and he's at this point, I hate this path. I don't want to go down this road anymore. I want to stop. I want to go on God's path. I want to go on God's path. And a lot of times we don't know what is and how to even go on God's path. What does this say? Your word is a what? A lamp for my feet on my path. Right? That's why... God's way, the word of God, or the voice of God, um, he, we do have the guide to help us to know what path to take. Sometimes we might wonder, like, oh, do we need to go on this path or this path? One way to, to help you find this is, right, is the word of God. Sometimes you're going to think, oh, it might be close, right? Oh, you know, if I just, you know, maybe I compromise something a little bit here or, or you know, I give in a little bit of this, and, you know, um, and it should be okay. Or you let God, the, the word of God, be the light and that's really how we learn to trust in God. That's, that's when he becomes um, the real guide in your life. You wonder, how do you do that? How do you stay on God's path? The word of God becomes the guide, the light to your path. Um, and you come to a point where, you know, you start to see, well, either God's way or your way. And as God reveals himself to you, being the lamp to you, you start to see, oh, oh, this path, which once was a wonderful path, a path full of excitement and fun, or a path full of, that allows me to vent my anger out on people, or a path that allows me to, to go this unhealthy way or whatever it is, you start to say, oh, this, I, this is not attractive to me anymore. I don't, I don't like this. This is, this is a dark, ugly path. God's path becomes beautiful. And it's the path that you begin to desire more and more in your life. I don't want Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Yeah. 
we need to recognize again we have life and humanity we're, we're complicated we're filled with all kinds of thoughts and ideas so you can call it temptations we have our own desires our own you know destructive habits we are filled with all these things that 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 take us on one road to another that help that make us make decisions from one thing or another and it, you know and we're we're bombarded right we live in hollywood land um, my sister's a film publicist. She's right here, sitting here. It's her fault. No, um, uh, <laughs> um, but we live, we live in a place where we're, we're just, it's so easy to get wrapped up on so many different things. And for us to entrap ourselves into these things. But if we can become like this, proverb here, where we just become humble, submit to the Lord, to trust in his ways, to, to not focus on what we, what our ego says, what we need, and focus on what God says is what is best for us. Be patient. Be kind to people. To put others first before yourself. And just to submit to God. Allow him to be your lead. When you lean on to him, you trust in him, what would he do? He'll make your path straight. Boy, I wish our past was straight on that men's mountain climb, right? Path straight, right? I know it's the bumps and the climbing and all that stuff is kind of exciting. But when you're running a marathon and it's going 26 miles, right? You don't want any inclines. You don't want any roundabouts. You just want it to go straight. Life is a marathon, right? You don't want it to be going all over the place. You just want it to go straight. God, make my path straight. And as God gives us the remedy for that, trust in him. Humble yourself to him. Let us pray. Father, Lord, thank you so much for this moment in time to be in your presence again. We pray, Lord, that you, each of us, we've all made numerous mistakes. We've all gone down our own road, and we all recognize when we have and where it has led us. But Lord, you have a, a path in front of us to help us through life, to help us through our obstacles, help us to deal with our sufferings, to help us to overcome our enemies, to help us to experience a joy and true pleasure for, of life, Lord. Give us the, the courage, the strength, the wisdom, and the humbleness to be able to take those steps on the path that you have given us. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.